Wow. Sponges. We're on to sponges. This is like the, you know how I said that teardrops are the bread and butter of face paint? Sponges are what's the bread and butter of how to do your designs fast and sanitary because you can just do one swoosh and then put it in your cleaning bag for later to sanitize and well anyways they're just fun and fast so i'm going to show you a bit about sponges when you buy a sponge it will usually come already together in this shape some will have a sharp edge some will have a rounded edge see that rounded edge that's exactly what you want now some face painters will paint using the flat part that's okay it gives you that nice crisp line up and down but if you want to have more maneuverability and blendability on your sponge you want to use the rounded edge but also sometimes kids faces are smaller than this so usually when you get these sponges you have to take a sharp pair of scissors and cut them in half yourself and then i take the quarter or the half and i cut that in half and i get these little quarters Now, when choosing a sponge, just make sure that there's a few holes are okay, but this, but the more holes, the more you have to do a pushing, a stippling motion to get it to cover all the way. But if your sponge looks like this with just a few holes, that's okay too. Some people's sponges are all the way fully even. And that is what's preferable, but it's okay to get the cheaper sponges and cut them. Now sponges, as you see, can come whole or come on a stick. And the ones that come on the stick can be different sizes. I'll show you how I use these, but you can use them for making bubbles, for making mice, for doing snowmen. There's a lot of fun applications for those. And another sponge, you have shaped sponges. This is a long teardrop sponge. And I'm gonna see my other sponge. These tipped sponges can be short or they can be long. If I want my quarter to have this shape, after I rub it on the paint, I bend the edges in like this to try to get the same shape. That's the fun part about working with sponges is they can change their shape very quickly, very fast. This point is really good if you're doing butterflies or you're going into the corner of an eye. These are a bit trickier to go into the corner of an eye because they're wide. You got to push them down to get them right where you want them. Maneuverable, tricky, but maneuverable. This, I, I just found this is just too long for children's eyes. I try to squeeze it smaller like this, but that dimples the end. But that's okay if I'm doing a very fun butterfly. That, that just adds to the wing look. So that's a little bit about different face paint sponges. And the other one I'm gonna show you, this sponge is called a finger dauber. It's a very narrow sponge that's on the tip of a plastic thimble that your finger goes in. Now the way I activate sponges is with a spray bottle. If you dip it into water, just a little bit of water will, this sponge will soak up a lot of water and too much water will cause the paint to run down the face. You don't want that. So when I want to activate my sponge, I get my spray bottle. I spray my sponge several times and then I might push down on it just to work some water into the sponge and then I spray it one more time. I'm going to use blue. I'm gonna use my blue split cake and I'm going to, I'm gonna adjust the camera angle. 
All right, we're going down to my workstation because we're going to get to some serious showing how I apply paint to my sponges. So let's journey. We're going to go down. And you're going to flip around so you see it from my point of view. All right. I've wet my sponge by spraying it. Test it on your hand. Make sure there's no drippy water. It's wet, but nothing's dripping. And now I go to my split cake and I rub back and forth on my split cake, picking up the colors. Now I'm going to go to my face paint practice board and we're going to pull across. Just lay it down, pull it across. Or you can stipple it by going up and down. Practice boards are not really good for practicing your sponge work. Even the textured surface is a little too smooth. But if I do it on my skin, you can see that it looks a lot better. And when I stipple it up and down, I get a better full coverage. Also, it adds interest. I'm going to squeeze my sponge together and I'm going to lay it down here. The colors are starting to blend on my sponge, but that's okay. I'm going to drag and lift up here on the edge. Now, you can see it's a bit messy. On your practice boards, you can clean up the edges. The child's hair, if you're doing this live, will cover up any over coverages of paint. But on a practice board, you can just wipe the areas. You can cover a large area very quickly with a sponge. And then I would take the sponge and I would put it in a wash basin. And i will just collect it and when I get home, I would wash it in hot water, soap. And once it's done washing, I might put rubbing alcohol on them and put them out into the sun and dry under the good UV radiation to kill germs. And then I just let that dry. Now I'm going to take another practice board. I'm going to take the green. Now, when I lay down the blue, I use the rounded side of my, I use the rounded side of my sponge. Now I'm going to use the flat side of my sponge. I'm going to spray my sponge. I could even give a spray onto my split cake. Squeeze the sponge to the shape of the container and pull it across. I like working with sponges and split cakes because the sponge doesn't want to spread out and go in different directions. Once you put it down and start rubbing, it's in a set track. And now I'm going to drag, stipple and drag it. And now I'm going to go here. I'm going to go just to the tip of my sponge like this. I'm going to use the tip. I'm going to go up, down, and make a letter S motion. And I can come back and stipple it if I want to darken it. Remember, if you did this on skin, it wouldn't be so streaky. And now I want to make sure that, that I'm making a snake. I'm going to make the top of the snake just a bit thicker up here. To make the head, I can again move it, change the shape. 
and just push it down. If I don't want the nose of a snake so thin, I go to the edge of my sponge that has the darker green and I can pull down. Sponges are very fun and fast to work with. If you're doing a festival and you have a hundred kids, you can do the snake in 30 seconds or less. Because most of it, all you have to do for the snake is maybe put some eyes on it. You might want to put some stripes and the child, or maybe just a quick outline. So in one minute, you could have the snake done. If I did this by brush, by hand, it would take a lot longer. I would have to load up a different color on my brush each and every time. You could also use your wide brush. You can do your wide brush to get the same effect. I am going to re-wet my brush. I'm going to get my split cake, pull back and forth. And on my face, I'm going to do, pull it down, pull it up. You usually want the dark on the top. As you see practice boards, pick up and hold the paint a lot better than sponges. But then you'd still have a brush to deal with. It's fast, but not as fast as doing the sponge. Since I am just messing around here, So that's how I would brush on a split cake. And this is how I would use my sponges. Now there's another sponge technique I want to show you. And it is how to use these finger daubers. The finger daubers are for applying stencils. They don't hold a lot of water. That's exactly what you want because if you have too much water, you could overbleed. Or what if I just want to use the round? You could just use the round. Here, I'm going to spray that sponge. Looking here, I want to do polka dots. So I'm going to get this orange and this white. On this, this is a larger split cake. I'm going to rub my finger dauber over where the two meet. And I should end up with orange on one side and white on the other. And then I can go to my design and I can do two toned polka dots. Or you could do blue and white and you end up with soap bubbles. You could even get a, a business card or plastic and do a half circle. Can you tell what she's going to become? I used a sponge to lay a layer of different shades of blue across here. I've showed you how I use the finger sponge. And now I'm going to flip back to a little bit of line work. I'm going to take one thing about split cakes. I could use this. And if I just wanted to pick up black, I could just use the black here or pick up the white. Large split cakes, not only are they good for covering the whole face, like this would be a good one if I was doing a tiger. I have all the colors of my tiger here and I have black. But I'm going to finish this design here for you. I'll probably do it again. So I've sprayed it and I'm pulling and I'm twisting. I'm rotating that brush around through the black. When you're doing line work, where you're making lines, 
and when it comes to black, you really want the paint to be very, very wet. Wet brushes with sharp tips make the best lines. You don't want to run out of the black. Now, do you remember when we did uh, zebra stripes? Thin to thick to thin? That's what we're going to do, but we're not going to make it so thick. We're going to start on the edge. We're going to go thin, thick, and thin. And we're going to go thin to thick to thin because that adds interest. Thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. We're going to do a circle. Thin, thick, thin. Thin to thick to thin. And then thin. By adding different thicknesses of line, it makes your design more interesting. I overwipe, I wipe too much paint off of here. When you're doing wrinkles in clothing, it's good to just start on the edge and do a little small flicks on either side. We're doing a pirate scarf here. We got a little pirate princess here. And it's good to do a little thick to thin as you flick out, just like you do those stars. Maybe do a little crease there in the knot, do a little, maybe a spiral. And look, the split cakes and the sponges made a very fast princess pirate. You can even have fun. Let's do thick. A curved teardrop. Thick, pull it thin and curve. You can even give her a goatee. Thick to thin, teardrop down. Thick to thin, thick to thin. Before you know it, you'll be starting to just combine different elements of all the things that you just face painted. What if I want to give her an eye patch? I would draw around her eye. I would have the child close their eye. It's okay not to paint right against their eye. You just need to give enough of a suggestion. Let's give her a little scar. You could do it in red or you can just do black if you're you want to do a fast pirate, you can do an X across the line. Just do a diagonal slash, another X, another slash. And there you go, you got a pirate. What if I want a mean pirate? Let's pray on my black, pull and roll. I want a mean pirate. So I'm going to make her eyebrows dark. So I'm going to come down with a thin line, push down thick, and pull up and into her own eyebrow. And there we go. A fast pirate princess. So have fun practicing with your sponges. Oh, there's another sponge trick I can teach you. This sponge got a corner torn out of it. But that's okay. I can use that. I'm going to cut, make that tip sharper. I am going over here to the side. I'm at that age where I need reading glasses because I'm doing some really detailed work here. I do my face painting without my reading glasses. I kind of, Monet did the same thing. When Monet did his painting, he was having problems with his eyesight too. So I am cutting the edges of this plunge. More flat, can you tell what I'm doing? I'm gonna curve that a little bit 
cut off this sharp tip here. I'm going to cut down into this plunge a little bit. I am shaping my sponge. Now, you can buy sponges, shaped sponges, but you can also further increase and exaggerate the qualities of that shaped sponge yourself. Can you see it? Looks like one lobe is smaller than the others, but that is okay. I am making a heart. Because I'm making a heart, I'm going to get my rose split cake. You, you don't want to put too much water, so you don't want to dip it. You want to spray it. Tap it in. Maybe give just one spray onto, a spray or two onto your cake. Decide what part of your heart you want dark. I'm going to put the dark on the top of my heart. And I'm going to rub my shaped sponge. Very careful not to twist it. Just even back and forth. And there is my heart. And then I'm going to come over here. My pirate has a heart-shaped tattoo under her eye. And I stipple it up and down, up and down, maybe give a little wiggle. And you can see the heart. If I, I'm going to get it on my hand. As you see, using sponges on practice boards don't quite come out the same on your skin. So you'll be practicing the slot on your leg, on your arm, on your best friend, on your husband. So decide where you want your heart. And I'm pouncing it up and down. Maybe give a little wiggle. And you can see, you can get a heart. The better quality of sponge, the better it will turn out but as you see you can touch up your heart just by using the sponge and just rubbing and filling in in the areas how fast is that someone wants a heart okay load this up stamp 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 maybe because I don't have this as wet let's make this really really wet a lot of water Load it up, try it again. Goes on even better. So have fun, shape some sponges, practice it. Sponges are very, you're gonna love it, they're very good. I have been spraying on top of my pirate and my pirate is running away. I'm going to show you about how I use sponges and stencils next have fun practicing but you know what it's good i get an all-purpose cleaner on my practice boards sometimes you will find some face paint colors will stain more than others green is infamous for liking to stain boards dark colors Dark reds will paint, stain your boards. But I find an all-purpose cleaner with a little bit of ammonia in it lifts those stains up a lot better than just using rubbing alcohol. And I'll just use that, clean up my hands. Seeing me do cleanup is just as important as seeing me lay down the mess. As a face painter, you're going to get your hands messy. Even if you wear gloves, your gloves are going to get messy. No one has found a way yet to keep their hands clean unless they were using a brush. A brush takes extra time. If you're wanting to do 100 kids in an hour, you're going to have to keep your designs to... Oh... 100 kids in one hour, you're going to have to do this design in about 20 seconds. And even then, you might not get to 100 kids. You have to be reasonable. 
uh, for face painting a child, you want to plan three minutes per child. So in one hour, three minutes, you, that means 20 children in one hour is all you can reasonably do. One hour, sorry, one minute for the child to decide their design. They're going to need a minute to sit in the chair, a minute to paint. Then they're going to want to admire themselves in a mirror. So you probably want to have a mirror to the side and tell them you want to see yourself, go over there, and then they will walk out of the chair really quick to see what they look like. So you might be able to get a child in and out of the chair in two minutes, but time-wise, 100 children in one hour, you're going to want to have at least three face painters and using sponges and just really, really fast designs. To do a really good design, you need about five minutes. So really fancy designs, you're going to plan for at least five minutes, maybe seven minutes, one minute to get in the chair, five minutes to paint. So, oh, I'm not done with sponges. There is so much fun with sponges. I want to do, I want to do some more sponge designs with you. Okay, I am going to get my rainbow cake. Here's my rainbow split cake. I'm going to use these two. Yeah, right when I think I'm done. There's there's so much there's so much about face painting. Okay, here I am. I am wetting my sponge. You can dip them in water and squeeze the excess water out, but then your water is your sponge is in the water and who knows what else has been in that water. But if you spray, you always have 100% clean, clear water on your design. So we're going to go in here. Now, notice this split cake was smaller than the sponge is wide. I squeeze the sponge in and once it's in, it'll pick up color. So I pull it out and you get a rainbow. And then I'm going to, I'm going to put red at the top of this rainbow, put it in and give a little wiggle. On my hand, I'm going to put it on. Pounce it up and down, give a little wiggle until I know it's exactly where I want it. Now I take the smaller one. The main color to pick up here is that red. So I push the sponge on the red side. Pull back and forth till I have it. And then if red is on the top on your design, make sure red is at the top and you want to pounce there. You pounce there. Isn't that fast? Isn't that easy? You got a very popular mouse here. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to get my black. Spray my split cake black. Load up just a little bit. And then do a little squiggle down. And there you go. A very fast sponged on balloon. Woo, floating. And now I want to do get another large and small. It's good to have these sponges in different sizes. I did have one super tiny, but unfortunately most of them come big and I don't get enough of the mini and small ones. So I'm going, if you do not have a split cake, I can show you what you can do. I am cleaning my brushes out and pulling out my big, my big palette of paint. Going to go up just a little bit more. Oh, sneak hint. We're going to do something with those later. All right. I'm going to load this up for a bubble, but I don't, you can use a split cake with white. I need more white on it than this has. 
So I'm going to spray wet. It's okay with water getting gets on here. The water will evaporate. I'm going to use white and I'm going to use the darker blue down here. Give a few sprays there. The water will activate it. So first I'm going to push the sponge onto my paint and I'm going to roll and twist it. Besides just going back and forth, rotating your sponge will also help pick up paint. So we got a lot of white paint there and now we need blue. So I'm going to push this one edge and rub the edge in. So one edge is blue. Now I'm going to take my practice board and with the white and the blue, I'm going to push it down and twist and lift up. There's a big bubble. There's another big bubble. So the dark, just decide where you want to have the dark color of the bubble and just be consistent. You want to do only a few large ones. If they're really big like this on a face, two is reasonable. You could do a half bubble by putting a business card down. And do a half bubble so it looks like it's disappearing into their hairline. Now I'm going to wet my round. Sometimes your sponges will, because they're stored, they flatten. But once they get wet, they puff out to their original space, or the, or the original size. My white is still wet, so I'm going to pick up some white. Now some sponges, these round sponges, some are really cheap and they're very super soft, while others are more firm. You want to get the ones that are more firm. The ones that are too soft, they don't get enough pressure to pick up the paint. They start just gliding. So I'm pouncing, just picking up that white paint however I can. And then I come back over here. You can see my blue paint is getting a streak of white in it. We're going to have to wipe that off in a little bit. But I only need a little bit of blue. So there we go, I've picked up some blue. I come here to my design and I make sure the blue matches the blue edge on the big dots I already have down there. And then I pounce it up and down, give a little wiggle and a curve. These can be snowballs, they can be bubbles. Add a little bit of glitter to them and they'll just sparkle. I've had people get in line again saying they want bubbles. Once they saw I put bubbles on one girl, everyone in line wanted bubbles. Bubbles or snowballs, you can get very creative snowmen. You can do a fast snowman really fast. You can do a two-layer snowman. You could do a snowman on top of a snowman. So to make the bottom bigger, I actually drag it around just a little bit wider. And there you go. Just using two sizes of sponges, I'm able to make the out, all the outlines that I need to make a snowman. If I want to reestablish that blue line, I would just pounce it there. Isn't that perfect? I tell you, sponges are the way to go if you want to do it fast. Sponges and a split cake are all you need to have a lot of fun. So order those sponges, get to practicing, have fun. You can find these sponges in the craft aisle of most stores. You can find shaped sponges or you can cut and make your own sponge. Just have fun with it. 
Happy painting!